Let me hear your horns. Hey Amen. If the Lord made a way out of no way, let me hear your horns. Hey Amen. It's always grateful to be back in the house of the Lord one more time, fellowshipping with our, our church members. At this point in time, if you will, if you have your Bibles, those of you who are out there on social media watching us, please turn to Acts chapter 3. We'll be reading from verse 1 through 10. Now Peter and John went up together into the temple at the hour of prayer, being the ninth hour. And a certain man lame from his mother's womb was carried, whom they laid daily at the gate of the temple, which is called Beautiful, to ask alms of them that entered into the temple. Who seen Peter and John about to go into the temple asked an alms. And Peter, fasting, fastening his eyes upon him with John, said, Look on us. And he gave heed unto them, expecting to receive something of them. Then Peter said, Silver and gold I have none, but such as I have give I thee. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. And he took him by the right hand and lifted him up, and immediately his feet and ankle bones received strength. And he, leaping up, stood and walked and entered with them into the temple, walking and leaping and praising God. And all the people saw him walking and praising God. And they knew that, th that it was which he set for alms at the beautiful gate and of the temple. And they were filled with wonder and amazement at which had happened unto him. Blessed be the reading of the word. At this time, we will also have our church covenant. Having been led, as we believe, by the Spirit of God to receive the Lord Jesus Christ as our Savior and on the profession of our faith, having been baptized in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, Holy Ghost, we do now in the presence of God, angels, and this assembly most solemnly and joyfully enter into the covenant with one another as one body in Christ. We engage, therefore, by the aid of the Holy Spirit to walk together in Christian love, to strive for the advancement of this church in knowledge, holiness, and comfort, to promote its prosperity and spirituality, to sustain its worship ordinances, discipline, and doctrines, to contribute cheerfully and regularly to the support of the ministry, the expenses of the church, and the relief of the poor, and the spread of the gospel through all nations. We also engage to maintain family and secret devotion, to religiously educate our children, to seek the salvation of our kindred and acquaintances, to walk circumspectly in the world, to be just in our dealings, faithful in our engagements, and exemplary in our deportments, to avoid all tattling, backbiting, and excessive anger, to abstain from the sale and use of drugs and intoxicating drinks as a beverage, to be zealous in our efforts and to advance the kingdom of our Savior. We further engage to watch over one another in brotherly love, to remember each other in prayer, to aid each other in sickness and distress, to co cultivate Christian sympathy in feeling and courtesy in speech, to be slow to take offense, but always ready for reconciliation and mindful of the rules of our Savior to secure it without delay. We moreover engage that when we remove from this place, we will as soon as possible unite with some other church where we can carry out the spirit of this covenant and the principles of God's word. At this time, we'll have a word, from, we'll have a, a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we give thanks for you, for you are God, God all by yourself. We thank you for the continued grace and mercy that you show us. We give thanks that you've already done. If you do nothing else, you've already done enough. Heavenly Father, we ask that you continue to watch over those who are suffering in illness through this time of pandemic. We ask that you watch over the children who departed from their families during this time as they've gone on to a new transition of college and some in the military. 
Father God, we don't know what all is necessary, but we know that you have the answer. As we know that nothing can beat your, your loving to us. Father God, we ask you to continue to just lift up our church. Lift up our bishop as he brings forth the word. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. At this time, we'll have a song selection. From One moment, we'll have a word from our bishop. Praise the Lord, everybody. And good morning. We know that uh, we're thankful, first of all, for being here this morning. And uh, this is another day that the Lord has blessed us, and we ought to be glad and give him praise for what he has already done. Uh, many of you know that we are in the final phase of, uh, of voting this year. And I want you to make sure that you uh, make sure that you uh, plan your vote. This is a pivotal time in our world, in our nation. There's so much going on, so much misinformation. We have the pandemic. We're in an economic crash all over the nation. People are losing their jobs. And I, I just want to say how thankful I am for you that, that make it to the house of prayer even though we're on a lot and you're giving up your sustenance your time and efforts <clears throat> even in this uncertain times that we live in so i want you to make sure that if you have not registered to vote uh, we have someone here today that's going to help you register so it's very important now we have several ways to vote number one you can have an absentee ballot how many of you have already seen that through the mail If you're not going to go, make sure you fill that information out and send it in today if you already have it. How many have already filled it out and sent it in? Okay. Don't procrastinate with that. This is not a CP time situation. You know what CP time is? That's color people time. Let's be on time. Make sure you fill those information ballots out. Uh, well, the request out, send it in very soon because they tried all kinds of tricks. Come on. So you got to be proactive in voting this year. We've seen so much unrest. So many of our black men are being killed every day. This buffoon that we have in the White House has no sense of sympathy. How dare him call us that have given our lives and time in the military, call us losers and suckers. No, we have one, but it's not here in the White House. Right. So you're going to call us names. Many of us were wounded and, and had PTSD and all kinds of mel medical uh, problems as a result of going to Vietnam and being in uh, Iraq and others. I've seen young men come home. They're so messed up in their mind, they commit suicide. So we got to do something. We got the vote this year like we never voted before. I'm not talking about Republicans or, or Democrats or Independents. You have to vote. Uh, people say, well, I'm tired of hearing, uh, you know, the, the traditionals and the baby boomers talking about, well, you know what our parents went through. Yes, they went through a lot. Many of them was hung for, for, for wanting to read and write and go to school and vote. Many of them was beaten. Unconscionable things happened to the black people and the African Americans doing Jim Crow and through slavery and all those other things. So let's not be lazy with this. Vote. Your vote is your power. So I just thought I would say that this morning. I don't mean to be kind of hard on us, but I've already filled out my my uh, certificate. We will make sure that I send out my absentee ballot. Filled it out the day that I got it, sent it in. So make sure you do that. Please, ma'am, and please, sir. And those of us who are listening to me, if you have it in your home, take a few moments while we're taking, receiving our offering and fill it out. If you need a stamp, call Brother Green. We got plenty of stamps around here, so make sure you send those things in. I'm working very hard, and I have to give thanks to uh, our Secretary of State, the Rose. He's really pushing for those, um, those ballots to be sent out to everybody to make sure that you have a right to vote. Now, this is 
Frank Morose, he's really serious about your vote. Your vote is your power. And please, ma'am, and please, so I, at the risk of sounding redundant, it is very important that you do that. Vanessa Gwynn, a white, is around here somewhere. And if you have not registered to vote, please, she's going to be able to do it. Now, you can register absentee ballot. You can vote that way. Or you can go personally and vote. But during this pandemic, you have to be very careful. I, I'm going to, you know, send my ballot in once I get it. But I'm, I'm at that age where I have to be very careful of my surroundings because I have pre-existing conditions. So your vote, don't say, well, my vote won't count. That's what they're hoping for, that my vote won't count. So make sure you um, do that today. I want to make sure I say that over and over again. So if you're going to do that and have done it, please, ma'am, and please, sir, make sure you fill out your um, request for a ballot. So you can go in person or you can ballot, uh, go up uh, by absentee ballot and do it that way. Thank you so very much for your time and your attention. Um, Y'all want to do the offering now? All right, we're going to do our offering right now and get that out of the way. And we just want, want to thank you all. We receive offerings from people that don't even belong to Mount Hermon. It's coming through Givedify and some through Cash App. I certainly want to thank you for your gifts. God has blessed us even during the pandemic. And I'm praying that we'll be able to, the curve has moved such that we can go back into the church house. I can't wait to get back inside the church. Amen. This is okay, but it feels so much better getting inside the church. You know, some of my friends are already in, so let's not be afraid when we get ready. The curve is kind of moving a little bit to the wrong way, unfortunately, because our kids are still going, people are still going to the bars and doing this, and and not uh, having social uh, discipline and distancing. So let's pray for one another. Let's remember all of our sick and afflicted that are uh, in the hospital. Sister Macy Newman is doing much better. She had back surgery. And she had a few little setbacks, but she's doing so much better now. Let's pray for all of them. It's good to see Sister Milner here. Amen. And Queen Esther here. Amen. She lost her husband a couple of weeks ago, but she's here today. So we want to thank them. So we're ready to receive our offering. Do some offering music, music y'all. Oh, immediately after service, we also have mixed vegetables, corn, and peas, and assort, uh, assorted meats. And we have all kinds of meat other than fish. So please come and get it after service. Please get it after service. We don't want it to be ruined. Please stop and get all this meat. We got a lot of it. All right? All kind, except for fish.
make sure that everyone has their communion. If you do not have your communion, please raise a hand outside the one of your vehicle so that it can be brought around to you. Thank you.
text up again. Minister Boston read it so beautifully. But I just want to just kind of give you a cameo of this text again. Acts chapter 3 verses 1 through 6. If 
you have it, say amen. amen. <laughs> okay. Now Peter and John went up together into the temple at the hour of prayer, being the ninth hour. And a certain man lame from his mother's womb was called beautiful to ask alms of them that entered into the temple who said and Peter fastened his eyes upon him with John and said look on us and he gave heed unto silver and gold have I none, but such as I have. And he looked him by he lifted him by the right hand and lifted him up, and immediately his feet and ankles. It's amazing what God can do. Yes, sir. It is amazing what God the green. It is about a lame man sitting begging at the gate of the temple and at the ninth hour. Brother Kenny, he was a man there who caught, could, could not walk nor make a living for himself, so he sat begging at the gate. He was reduced to beggary, lame. He figured that at least while coming to church, or come into the temple, that someone would have pity upon him, and they would give them some of their sustenance, being that he was a lame man. Little did he realize that this was an episode in his life that would change him for the rest of his life. He could not have ever imagined that when he gets there, God has a plan for all of us. But when he's there, Two disciples, Peter and John. Now you got to understand, Peter and John. His mouth, he was tough. He was just kind of boisterous. John was kind of compassionate. And you could have just imagined those two coming together at the same time at the temple. That says a lot to me because sometimes we think we only have to hang around people that we embrace, that have the same attitudes and the same disciplines that we have. They were Christians. When, he, when they came to the temple, they would not imagine that there would be this man there begging. Something happened that would change this man's life for the rest of his life because salvation and deliverance from the name of Jesus Christ would change his life forever. I need to tell you that God used humanity and often he used them for a particular purpose. Thank God for Peter and John availed themselves to be used of God. Isn't it amazing that if he can use a donkey, he can use you. That's right, right. If he can use a little boy's lunch, and bless it, he can use us. If he can use a little girl, a little maiden, and tell name and go dip yourself in the pool, and matter of fact, in the Jordan River, he can use us. Oftentimes, we think we don't have anything to contribute to the Lord, but God can use anybody. Right. God, when you go through the Bible and look at all of the people that God has used in a marvelous way, and at the risk of sounding redundant, God can use anybody. Regardless of what station of life that you're in. Look. Look. 
But we don't realize that Moses was a murderer. We know he killed an Egyptian and ran for his life. But he's not known for that. He's known for liberating the household of Israel. God can use anybody. Y'all yeah. know about David. David was a player. Y'all know that. David took that young girl because he had to have Bathsheba and put that young girl's husband in front of the battle area. Uriah so that he could be killed so he can have black hair running down her back like raven feathers. She had teeth that was whiter than a flock of sheep. She had eyes that set back in her eyes like a golden medallion. She had a shape like Venus de Marlo. She was fine. No wonder David messed up. Preach black boy. God can use anybody, but he's not known for that. He's known to be the sweet psalmist of Israel and a man after God's own heart. I tell you, God can use you. God can use anybody. Y'all remember Peter? This same Peter, cussing Peter. He preached one sermon and 3,000 souls were saved. And even Paul. Paul was one that was with Tobalt and he wanted to destroy the church. Gun Jackie. That was Paul. He changed his name from Saul to Paul on his way to Damascus because he was a persecutor of the church. God can use anybody. And he wrote over half of the New Testament. So don't realize that what the Lord Jesus Christ is able to do to them because when I was a young fella, I didn't believe that I, I know that I would be a preacher. Me? A preacher? Right. I was in the church, but the church wasn't always in me. Preach, y'all. Because one thing about it, I remember like it was yesterday, Miss Abbott, she would, Martha Abbott would play on the piano, and she would play this one song, and it would always get to my heart. It is no secret what God can do. What he's done for others, he would do for you with arms wide open. He'll, he'll pardon you. There is no secret what God can do. Do I have one and a half witness in the house? And we're here because God has been good to us. Irrespective of our downfalls and our messing up and our trifling life sometimes, God still blesses us. Let's consider this little wonderful pericope for a few moments because consider the following about this young man that was lame. First of all, he was a lame man. Let's look at a sinner from his birth. Uh oh, wait a minute. What do you mean? Because the Bible says in Psalms 58 and 3, the wicked are estranged from the womb. They go astray as soon as they are born speaking lies. We come here with bad information on our bodies. We come here bad. You don't have to teach a child to be good. He comes here that way with no written orders. Matter of fact, David even writes, he says, In sin did my mother conceive me. I was shaped in iniquity. I'm just suggesting to us that God can use anybody. This man, due to his situation, he was ascended by what uh, he or she does in our life. We don't come here looking to be saved, but there's something about the word of God through our parents that keeps us in time of trouble. I thank God for my mother because I, we were some bad, rambunctious kids, but she taught us how to pray. She taught us how to be nice. When somebody gives you something, say thank you, baby. And if you can't say thank you, say ta-ta. Right. But these scoundrels today, you give them something, they walk on and skip on and say, what? This all you're going to give me? Preach, Reverend. The timing of this bad boy. But look at the, the trouble it faced. This young man came to the temple every day, was laid there by whoever. And the trouble that came from it is that he lacked sustenance. It's a bad thing when you are lame and don't and can't take care of yourself. He lacked sustenance. He was on a poverty level. And I need to just park there for a moment. Don't ever say what you won't do when you don't have things. 
Sometimes when you don't have, when you don't have sustenance, some folks feel that the only way that they, we can attain sustenance is to sell dope. Listen, I, I've been down and out. I remember when I first came home from the war that we could not find jobs. I, did, I couldn't find a job anywhere. I'm a young married man and, and I had a job at Grant Hospital, but I needed a little bit more money, money working from 11 to 7. So I decided to work two jobs. I worked at Atlas Laundry on Spring Street. That's what I did because when you are lame and don't have sustenance, don't think that everybody's going to give you some. Sometimes you got to get up and do for yourself. Right. You listen. I'm going to tell you again, if things get bad for me, you heard me say it once before and I think I'll say it again. If things get really bad for me, I'm going to change this microphone to another microphone and say, good morning, do you want a biggie size this? <laughs> do you want fries? Look, aren't you Reverend Washington at Mount Harmon Baptist Church? Yes, but do you want some cheese to go on that hamburger or not? I'm not too proud to work. He lacked sustenance. And when you're at a poverty level, people do just about anything to keep food on their table. Don't look down on folk that people listen. I know it's tough out here, and I know what it is uh, when you don't have things, and you're going to try to figure out a way. And there's a lot of women and men, yeah, they're reduced to selling their personhood. Uh -huh. well, my God. Gigolos <laughs> and players <laughs> and ladies of the evening. And don't ever say what people won't do. I've been around a long time. And if you get into that situation, don't ever say what you'll never do for your family. I'm not suggesting that we should go out and do things that are unethical. But listen, God has a way. If you learn how to wait on him, God will take care of you. Because I heard them say, whatever be tied, be not dismayed. But every time, God will take care of you. He lacks sustenance. And then he also lacks satisfaction. It has to be a terrible thing, Brother Green, when you are lame and, and you lack sustenance. And then you, you don't, you're not satisfied with yourself when you can't make ends meet. So here he is at the gate. The testimony of it. It testifies of the condition of every person born with Adam's blood. All of us has gone through some extreme situations. But God is a miracle worker. There is no secret what God can do. He was a longing man. He was longing. He knew he needed somebody to be around. He knew there was something better than what he had. Somebody brought him to this gate in front of the church, the temple, every week or every day. It doesn't say how often, but they laid him there hoping that, they would get, that he would get alms. It's a bad thing when you come to church and you can't receive anything. The bad thing that people walk by you knowing that you need and they start singing, Jesus is on the main line. Tell him what you want. Preach, Reverend. Yeah. All of these things he longed for company. The things of God are better than what the world has to offer. We realize that he longed to be delivered from his condition that kept him from having quality of life, that kept him from walking and doing what he could do for himself. He longed to be able to go to church and, and be in fellowship with others. Many times, I'm sure he said, oh, if I could just walk, if I could just get up and take care of myself, things would be so much better in my life. And I don't know about you, but I've been in the condition where I thought I wouldn't make it. But I just kept holding on to my faith. Sometimes when it feels like you just can't make it another day, just hold on just a little while longer. The Lord will make everything all right. God had to send two messengers, Peter and John. 
Get out of I don't feel like it this morning. Is there anybody here that God has used in a mighty way to help somebody? Yes, sir. Every last one of us ought to be a working evangelist. Since we have the word in us, we have to give to others and help others. We don't walk by them. I'm downtown and I see the folks sitting on the ground and on the, on the ground with those little notes. And I just can't help it. I got to give them something. Mm -hmm. I know they might be on crack. I know they may be on this or that. But I just feel within my spirit that the Lord didn't walk past me. The Lord didn't forget me. And I just drop a few coins. And you just have no idea. That may be the only thing that they have to get some food for that day. Well, he longed for peace. God has sent a messenger by to help him. He longed for peace. Life was very troubled for him due to his condition. He longed for purpose. He had no real friends or people to, that he could come to for sustenance. Can you imagine being that way? Can you imagine the long for peace of mind and long for a purpose in your life, but you now reduced to beggary? He longed for power. There was no strength to walk. He could only imagine what it would be like that if he would be able to get up. He only longed to be like everybody else. But here he is sitting at the gate, beautiful, to be perceived as a bum and a beggar. All of us, at one time or another, had some hard times. And every now and then, we need some people to just stop by and just help us. There's no sense in singing that song, if I can help somebody, if you help nobody. This deliverance was faith. I believe in Acts chapter, in this same book, he found out that there was something special that went on. Watch what verse 6 says. Verse 6 kind of messed me up when I read it. Because then Peter said, silver and gold have I none. Mm -hmm. But such as I have give I thee. In the name of Jesus of Nazareth, rise up and walk. Can you imagine that? Can you watch him hearing? He's telling him about Jesus in the name of Jesus. Rise up and walk. But there is power in the name of Jesus. Can you imagine? He rise up. Oh, hallelujah. The Bible says, and immediately his feet and his ankles, bones receive strength. Watch him leaping. Verse 8. In verse 8, it says something that just blew my mind. It says, and he leaping and stood and walked and entered into them into the temple, walking and leaping and praising God. Watch him leaping. Watch him. Oh, excuse me. I don't feel like it this morning. Can you imagine him being taken to the temple every Sunday? And now Peter and James uses a name that's above every name. Because the Bible said, at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow. At the name of Jesus, every tongue confess. Watch him leaping. I don't know how you feel about it. But I remember the day when I found out that the Lord came into my life. I was 10 years old, 1132 Windsor Avenue, and I heard the Lord speak to my soul when Reverend Downey said, if there's anybody here know my Jesus, if anybody here know my Lord, and it kept on resonating in my mind. I used to hear my mother cry when church was going on, I used to see her rocking and reeling. When Reverend Downey would say, the Lord will make a way somehow. That Sunday evening, I felt fire in my bones. I didn't want to get up and 
front of anybody because I was only 10 years old. But I found myself jumping up next to my mother. She put her hand on me and both of us gave praise and began to leap in the name of Jesus. Is there anybody here know what I'm talking about? Not only watch him leaping, but walk, watch him walking. Can you walk right in the face of God when God saves you? You ought to be able to jump as high as you can. But when you come down, you ought to be able to walk straight. I wish I had somebody here that know what I'm talking about. He not only watch him leaping, watch him walking. But watch him praising. Verse 8 says he goes into the house of God and start praising God. I don't know what he said, but Brother Maurice, I believe that when he got through walking, got through leaping, he had a testimony. I wasn't there, but I wish I could have been there. I can imagine, Brother Green, that he came saying, I came. To Jesus, just as I was weary, wounded, and sad, unfound in him, a resting place. God will bless anybody. God is amazing what God can do. There is no secret what God can do. What he's done for others, he will do for you. Here we are today. The death angel has passed over us. We could have been a victim. We could have been at the gate. We could have been limping. But God gave you strength this morning. You got up this morning. Bless the Lord. Put clothes on your back to have assistance to put shoes on your feet got in your car and drove yourself right out here on the lot that's a good reason to give God a praise I wish I had somebody here to let the Lord know that had it not been for the Lord on my side Bless the Lord. It's amazing what God can do. Thank God for being saved. Thank God. He keeps on blessing me. Over. You drove here today on your own and you have not given your life to Christ. You can do that right here today. And if you in the atmosphere and, and watching us at home, just send us a little new. 2283 Sunbury Road. How you enjoyed the worship service today. And if you're not a member of any church, the door is wide open. You can anytime.
The Bible is clear that let a man examine himself that when we eat and we eat unworthily and drink unworthily, we bring damnation to our own soul. And for this cause, many are sick among us and many sleep. For this cause, he sent his son into the world that we might be saved. We're thanking God today that we have an opportunity to come today, this day that we've never seen before, and receive our communion. We're going to ask Minister Boston if he would come and he would get the right as we prepare for our communion. Now, if you have, how many, everybody have their communion? Yes, sir. Amen. Come on, Minister. On the night that Jesus was, was, was killed, he took the bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it, saying, Take, eat. This is my body, which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. Shall we all eat together? And after the same manner, he took the cup. And when he had supped, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye as oft as you drink it in remembrance of me. Shall we all drink together? And they went into the Mount of Olives, singing a hymn. I will bless the Lord. I bless you. We'll see you next week. At all times. His praise, His praise Please, make sure you go back and receive that meat, please. Sometimes this week and we have it.